morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I'm JP from Plumpot. Welcome to our channel. If you're new to this channel, in this channel we do a lot of PCB design tutorials using KiCad, Altium, and we also do some hobby projects where I build some stuff at home, as you can see at the back, and then I'll show you guys how I built it. So in this video, as the title said, is we are starting to build our own activity board for our newborn baby. So she's about four months old now, so I think in two to three months she'll be able to stand and start pulling things. So I want to design a activity board where she has inputs and then something will happen when she pulls something, pushes the button or makes a sound. So I'm going to break this up in different videos. So we're going to focus on one component, make it work, focus on one component, make it work. And then later on we put it all together to make the activity board. So in this video I'm going to focus on a joystick and LEDs. So how do I take the joystick, how do I make my Arduino, my ESP32 recognize my joystick movements and then how do I control the LEDs that I have on the LED strip with the joystick. So we're going to focus on those two things. I'm going to take it step by step slowly. So even if you have no electronics background, you'll be able to follow and understand and do it yourself. So if this sounds interesting, if you have a kid you want to build this for, let me know. I'll be happy to help as well. Um, join our Discord below and we can take you step by step as well while you build this. Um, every week I'll go through one part of this activity board so you can also buy components slowly in and not just everything one time. Uh, but let's get started, let's have some fun, uh, enjoy! So let's have a quick look at what we are planning to put together uh, for the activity board. So yeah I use Fusion 360. Guys let me know if you want tutorials on this program. Uh, I basically just take a bunch of step files and put it together to get a feel about how it will be in real life. Um, so I try to put the inputs at the bottom <laughs> just to be safe for the hands and things that are moving I try to put on top. So you can see we've got some four buttons, a joystick, uh, a speaker at the bottom, a keypad, a potential slider. This is a 12 volt door lock so maybe you can create something to open close. Um, I added something fun just to for her to throw coins in. So I'm actually going to put a coin count here as well, maybe display it on the screen. And here's a servo motor that we can attach something to uh, that can just move and then a fan. So we're going to connect this all to the ESP32 type of board, um, program of Arduino, and then every button or movement will be able to do something. And then we added an LED light strip on the side just to give some effect. So maybe if she moves the joystick, uh, lights will appear up or buttons pushed. So it's completely programmable. Uh, like I said, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to connect this, how to build this yourself. I'm going to go through each section step by step in YouTube videos. For example, how to make the how to make the joystick work, how to make the LEDs work, the keypad. So it's not going to be one big video, but a bunch of smaller videos because I want anyone who does no knowledge of electronics to be able to do this and build this and just take my code and insert it, but also understand it. Because maybe you want to add something different for your child, then it should be quite easy to do. You can always contact me on Discord and we can see how I can help you. So part of this video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up the joystick with the LEDs. Um, so I'll focus on what joystick we're using and what LEDs and then how to write a small program to make the LEDs move as you move the joystick. Um, guys, I'm going to show you the components I'm using. If you want to buy your own joystick and you want to know if it can work or how it can work, let me know. Uh, some of these components might be a bit expensive, I understand. So if you find a cheaper solution, message me on Discord and we can see how we can integrate your type of joystick in this project. So let's speak about the joystick. So the joystick I used is uh, just the arcade joystick. So what it means, it's got like some nice tactile feel to it, as you can see here. Uh, this is exactly the one I've got. Uh, it's got mounting holes so we can make it nice and uh, mounted on the cardboard or wood, whatever you use. And then it's got just four switches. So this joystick is not like analog where it will know exact position X, Y. It's either up, right, down or left or up, right if you click both buttons at the same time. So you can see this joystick as a normal button. So when I push up, it's a button being pushed. So we're going to treat it when we build a circuit like a button with a pull down resistor to ground. Uh, that's all you kind of need to know for this. It, I, li I like this because it makes a noise. It's easy to grab. Uh, I found that she grabs it easier and moves it a lot. Um, so 
uh, advice to get an arcade joystick but I'm sure you can use any one so let's look how we're going to connect it um, as you can see by this image this joystick already has a nice connection um, for five pins because the one I showed you guys was like this so it was loose over here so you can see the tabs are out there but you can also buy one that already has a board connected to the tabs and it only gives you the output of the wires this is much easier to connect um, I've got the other one in real life which I'll show you later in this video so I've got this one where you have to solder the wires to it and make sure that all of them are connected with each other with power and then the one that's left over becomes the one that connects to the resistors as I'll show you so same as this one is power and the other pulls up down left right and that's what you'll see here my first one's power has to get 5 volts from your Arduino your ESP does not matter get 5 volts then I've got 4 resistors for up down left right and that's pulled down to ground the reason for that is when I move the joystick I will give a high signal to my pin and when I don't move it I want to make sure that it's low that it's zero therefore I put a resistor to ground to make sure when I'm not moving my joystick I will always read a zero and when I push it up I'll read a one we will go through the code later um, so for all you have to know now is this pin 13 12 11 10 when I move up one of these pins will be high when I move down another pin will be high so this pins become high they become 5 volts when I start moving my joystick depending what direction I'm moving um, so play around with it I'll show you the guys the code later on we'll walk through it because we're going to add the LEDs to it as well and then just so as you move it you'll see each pin will go high um, make sure that you understand when I push up which pin gets activated or which line gets activated because with the joystick if you push up you're actually pressing the bottom um, switch so when you push up you're actually pushing the bo bottom switch if you push left then you're actually pushing the right switch so it's a bit inverted just double check that when you're building the circuit let's add the LED so let's chat about the LEDs um, as if you if you've been to this channel for quite a while you know I really like the WS2812 so these LEDs look like this um, they come in a roll like this and it with three wires you can control a lot of LEDs so as you see by connection here we only need power ground and one wire to our Arduino or ESP to be able to control any LED so you look at our drawing all these LEDs are connected to each other and only three wires will come into to connect to it so this image you see here we will use a roll like this um, so there's like sticky tape at the back you can just unravel it and then paste it on your border uh, these are great little LEDs so how we connect it like I said all you need is one ground pin one 5 volt and then one DN so you can choose a pin on your Arduino to control these LEDs you can connect these LEDs and make them longer and longer by soldering on these sides that's why you see in this drawing it's kind of cut in half uh, we're only representing two here but you can connect up to 100 200 like we will do with our activity board yeah so all these leds will be connected so if i zoom in here you'll see ground will be connected to ground d out will be connected d in and five volts will be connected to each other and then they will just daisy chain all the way around and light up this activity board now that we spoke about all the connections let's look at the code so let's go step by step through the code uh, I'm using the Arduino IDE, it just makes life way easier. And I use the fast LED library. I'll put a link below where you can download the library, and then you can just go sketch, include library, and add the library. Uh, I'll add a tutorial below as well. You can watch how to add libraries. So the one I'm going to use is fast LEDs. So then you can see I defined a couple of uh, variables like LED pin you see 14 so the LED pin is the pin that is controlling your LED lights when I look at my schematic in our case here it is 9 the one I built that you see in the video is I use pin 14 but this drawing is pin 9 then the number of LEDs is important so how long is your string the one that I have is 53 
So that means that I've got 53 LEDs on the edge of my border. So if that increases or decreases, you have to change this number. And then brightness is only 10%. You must be careful changing this too high. Uh, it does take a lot of power. So if you're powering your LEDs through a microcontroller like the Arduino or ESP32, and you make this brightness like 50 or 100, or uh, you can maybe burn the Arduino. It's unlikely, but it's possible because the Arduino cannot get enough current to supply the brightness. So I keep it at 10% and it seems to work fine. LED type, like I said, we've got the WS8211 and then your order is green, red, blue. This is just how the fast LED is set up. Then I create variables to say how many LEDs I've got on my top of my board, on the right side of my board and the bottom of my board and then the left side of the board. I did this to make the program a bit scalable so if you add more or less you can change these variables and it should be able to the program should be able to run without any issues so if you fix these variables then later on if you add any more strips it becomes more difficult to program then you see my joystick pins so right joy down up left 22 23 21 19 these are the pin numbers of the arduino so go back here so in this tutorial or this schematic it is 13 12 11 10 but again, in the video that I show you, I connected to these pins, 22, 23. So this is the pin numbers. And then I create variables to say what the position of my LED is, where is it in my string, is the first LED, the 10th LED, which one is on. And then I check which part of the joystick is pressed, right, left, down, up. So these are just the variables I keep track. So if I push this left or right, then these will become one. I'll make it zero by default. So then we look at the setup. As normal, we just say serial.begin. This enable us to be able to write to the serial monitor on the top right here, uh, where we want to view some information. We've got our four movements of our joysticks and we make all these four inputs. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, the joysticks behaving like a button. So when you move it, you're actually just pushing a button and we have to tell the program that this button is an input. Uh, I give a short delay of three seconds. LEDs, like I mentioned, takes a bit of power, so we don't want everything to switch on straight away. So I put a three second delay just to power up my ESP32 and then switch on my LEDs. And this is part of the fast LED library, um, the one that we installed on top. I'm not going to get too much. This is a function that takes the LED type, pin, and color, and then magic happens in the background to make this stuff work. Uh, set the brightness to 10. So you can see the value that we spoke about. So the brightness is a variable and on top here we made a 10. So let's focus on the loop. So the loop in Arduino is basically a section of the code where the code will run from top to bottom and when it reaches the end, it will just go back to the top. So let's go through the main code. So setup runs once and then the loop runs many times over. So first what we do is we say that the right joy press, so this is the variable we create on top, we say that read what what happens to my joystick at the right position. So when it's not in the right position, it'll be a zero. And when it's in the right position, it'll be a one. So Arduino will read this pin, right joy, which is pin 22. But in our picture, it might be something else like pin 13. It's up to you what you make it. So we do that. We tell the Arduino to read what's the state of that pin so what's the state of pin 22 23 21 and 19 now this is where the mass comes in uh, i'm going to break this up how i did it i'm sure there's many ways to do it i did it like this so that later on if my top right bottom or left increases i can just change these values and it should work but let's focus on the main part of the brains of the code to explain the code it's better to look at this picture so what I did is my first LED is on the top left. So that means this is actually zero LED. So it's like a ray where it starts with zero, not one. So it's actually zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So what I did is I can only move right of the joystick if my LED is less than the top LED. So my LED position. So this is where the position comes in. LED position. 
So we're going to increase and decrease the position depending on the uh, depending on the joystick. So this is zero, one, two, three. We say if if my LED position is less than my number of LEDs. So if my position is less than number of LEDs here, I can go right on the joystick. So if it's on the top, I can either use the right joystick or the left joystick. So if I'm at the top, I can't go up and down. So I, I stop the movement for up and down because it doesn't matter. I can only go right or left. And then I break into the next one and say, okay, if my LED position is more, is more than my top, so it's more than 14, should I say, or whatever this number is. So it's more than that, but also less than the top plus the right. So I only focus on this strip then. So it's more than this, but less than this. So we only focus on these LEDs. And that's all I did in my code. I said, if my LED is bigger than the top and it's less than top plus right, then I can use the down and up. So you can see what I did here. So and then further again, the next one, I say if it's more than top plus right, it's so this one, and less than top plus right plus bottom. And you can see I just didn't code. So what we're talking now is you just write it as words. And then the final part of the code was just this one is if my LED is more than top plus right plus bottom and less than top plus right plus bottom plus left. Um, so I hope you understand what I'm trying to do. So this one is only less than the top. And we keep adding the sides and you'll see the code just represents that. And then at the end, we had to do if the LED position bigger than 52, this I should actually make um, number of LEDs minus one. Then I make it zero. So what that means is once I go past this, um, this array, this number. So if I go to 53, 54, I don't have LEDs with those numbers. So I would like it to carry on with zero. So when it goes past to 52, 53, then I want to go back to zero. And that's what I say here. I say, if it's more, then go to zero. But then I can also go negative. So if I go negative, then it goes minus. And if it's minus, I'll make it 52. And then all we do is we clear the LEDs. So it's only the latest LED. We make it green and then we show it. And then I just delay it for 30, um, 30 milliseconds. That's basically the code step by step and i hope if there's any questions just send me a message or comment below and that's it guys thanks for joining um, as you can see throughout the video my hair changes uh, my voice changes so i'm making these videos on different days different time in the morning uh, this is at like half past six half past five in the morning i'm trying to find gaps between um, yeah just keeping a little baby alive so but i'll make a plan so that's no issue I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope the way we're doing this will be helpful for you guys. So I'm not going to just do one big video to say, well, here we go, just build it. I'm going to try to break it down into pieces so you understand the pieces. And then later on, if you want to change something, you can. So you can make something special for your own son, your own daughter. That is the plan. Uh, but yeah, until the next video, we will look at a different part of the activity board. Let me know in the comments if there's some part we should add, kids will like. Uh, what you could change um, all files all code will be available to you guys so you can build this yourself have a great day until the next video bye